talk for a few minutes. We're good on time today. Y'all too late. Nobody even. Y'all was so quiet. Nobody said take your time or nothing. But all right. Uh, um, let me move on. I want to talk about today the ultimate gift. The ultimate gift. Look at your neighbor and say the ultimate gift. This Sunday kicks off the Christmas season. And I wanted to set the record straight about what the season is is all about you really have been given the ultimate gift it is worth more than silver or gold diamonds or rubies this is the gift that keeps on giving I, 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 I know it's really hard for us to fully understand his love for us. And when you don't fully understand the love that Jesus has for you, it's hard for you to appreciate the gift. You, 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 you know, there's times in our lives that um, um, when, when we've heard all of our lives growing up that Jesus loves you. I, I mean, that's such a cliche. Jesus loves you. Hey, they meet you in the mall and hand you a track and say, Jesus loves you. And, and Jesus loves you. And, and it has become so watered down that we really don't understand the gift that has been given to us. But today I want to talk about that you have received the ultimate gift and when you don't know the value of the gift you can't appreciate it if I gave you an iPhone today and I told you I said here's your iPhone and here is your gift it's an iPhone 10 somebody felt that so I got one person's hand to say I'll take it if you just sit the iPhone on your dresser, you don't appreciate that you're able to take pictures with it. You're able to get on the internet with it. You're able to do international calls with it. You're able to do uh, shop at Amazon with it. You're able to bank with it. You're able to do deposits with it. You're able to do withdrawals with it. The iPhone, y'all can tell I'm not an Android person. Who got Android in here? Boo. Boo. Where are my iPhone users? Woo. Y'all know the real thing, Android. <laughs> anyway, let me, let me go back to the story. Because I done, I done got all baby talking. No, the Android can do better now. Let, let, you, you won't value the gift, if you don't know what all it is capable of doing. So I'm here today to remind you that you have the ultimate gift that Jesus is capable of doing incredible things in your life when you know how to use him properly. When you know the value of him. I asked Charles to sing for me. Uh, a song that I wanted to go with my sermon today. Um, and I just thought it would speak volumes of the ultimate gift. And so would you just allow him to share this and, and then I'm going to come back and finish because I want to use some of it to let you know that you have the ultimate gift. Look at your neighbor and say you have.
slowly be gotten
reason that we're sitting in here to communion today is because of the ultimate gift that God has given us. The, the words that maybe you didn't understand, it said God could have chosen never to love again. Falling men could go their way and die in their sins. But God in his compassion said I'll pay redemption's price. So he took on God took on the form of man and became the perfect sacrifice. Then it says, oh, if riches could have paid the debt, then God could have sold all the walls of Jasper and the streets of purest gold. But he knew the price of one lost soul was worth more than wealth could buy and if redemption was ever going to be bought only love would satisfy would you one more time look at your name and say you have the ultimate gift I, I think this is good news for you because if you get to Christmas and you open up and find out you didn't get what you expected. If you get to Christmas and you find out that they couldn't afford Jared's, or they couldn't afford what you wanted, they couldn't afford to buy the house, the car, or, or whatever you was expecting, you can still have a Merry Christmas because you still have gotten the ultimate gift <laughs> I wish there was three ten people in here could thank God that you have the ultimate there is <laughs> would you do me a favor and look at your name and say no pressure you have the ultimate gift go with me right quick to Isaiah the ninth chapter I, I, I'm, I'm going to walk through this because I think that we hear these scriptures so often that we don't really understand them. But, but if you give me just a few minutes, I'll have you out on time if you allow me to walk through this. Isaiah 9, 6 says, watch this. I'm going to break this down. says, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given right there is the gift the son is given Jesus is given he was born but he was given unto us like I said the benefits what is the benefits then pastor of Jesus being given to us the next verse the next uh, few lines tells us and the government will be upon his shoulders. Let me, let me break that down to you. In other words, the responsibility of establishing the kingdom, the church, and salvation rests on his shoulders. It doesn't rest on your shoulders. Pleasing God, pay attention. Pleasing God to get you in heaven didn't rest on your shoulders. It rested upon his shoulders. His responsibility was to usher in his amazing grace with no expectation and help from you. In other words, in other words, he saved you, brought you into the family of God, and it did not depend upon how good you were. It was resting upon how good he was. A child is born, but thank God that a son was given. Because when the son was given, the son was given for you and for I. Somebody give God praise. The scripture says, for by grace you have been saved through faith, 
not of works. It is a gift of God. The full responsibility. Oh, this is going to be good. I don't know if you'll be able to handle this. The full responsibility of your salvation rests on Jesus' shoulders. Wow, I thought I was going to get a lot of hand claps on that. Because most of us think it's our responsibility to save ourselves. How can you save yourself when you didn't die for yourself? He died for you. He paid the ultimate price and he's going to put the responsibility on. Oh, let, let me say it this way. Let me say it this way. I have a house that I live in. I went to work and I'm going to pay the mortgage. I got the mortgage. I got the money. I'm going to pay my house note, but I'm going to give it to Josiah, who was 10 years old, to pay it for me. Why would I invest all of this work, all of this time, and then leave it to him to make sure that it's paid? God's not leaving your salvation to you. You too crazy. One day you feel like a nut. Some days you don't. One day you feel like cussing somebody out. Next day you don't. One day you want to shoot your husband. Next day you want to love your husband. God ain't leaving your salvation on you. You too crazy. He put all it on Jesus' shoulders. And he's given you his son. For unto us a child of God. Can you look at somebody and say, thank God it ain't up to me? Thank God it ain't up to me. I, I want you to know what ultimate gift you got. It's not up to me. Listen, it says, says, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government, the, the way the establishment of the kingdom will be upon his shoulders. And because he has taken full responsibility and he has given us his incredible, amazing grace, his name shall be called Wonderful. <laughs> he's wonderful. He, he's an incredible provider. He's an incredible healer. He's an, in, an incredible comforter. He, he's an incredible, he, he, he is so incredible that all I can sometimes say about him when you ask me to describe who Jesus is, all I can say is he is wonderful. He's, he's wonderful. He's wonderful. This is part of the benefit package of having the ultimate gift is knowing that the person who has been given to you has some fringe benefits and he is wonderful. He, he says not only is he wonderful, but he's a counselor. He, he is a light into my pathway. He, he, he's full of wisdom. He, he leads me by the still waters in the days when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I, I don't have to fear no evil because he is always with me. He's a, he's a comforter. He, 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 he's a comforter in the midnight hour when I can't reach you on your phone. I can, I can call him. He's a comforter. Saying sometimes when, sometimes when I, I don't think about him as wonderful. I, I think about him that he's comforting me. He, he's comforting me through this crazy world that, that, that I don't have to worry because he is my comfort. So, but not only <coughs> is he's my comforter or a counselor or he's wonderful, he, he's a mighty God. Yeah. He, he, he's, a, he's an incredible Mighty God. See, I, I, I could tell, I could tell y'all don't really understand what you got. Yeah, you know, because, because, uh, can I, let me say, let me say this, say, how can I say it this way? Years ago, how many of y'all remember the Palm Pilot? The, the hand palm, what was it called? Palm, palm Pilot, right? Yeah. Palm Pilot. It was the best gadget that was out there. How many of y'all own one, Palm Pilot? 
Okay. See, most of y'all hands didn't go up because y'all y'all too young. Y'all know about. This is before iPhone, iPad. This is this. Yeah. This is this was this was the stuff. This was the stuff. I I bought my wife a Palm Pilot. I, she kept saying, "I want a Palm Pilot." She wanted to be on cutting edge. Yes. Yes. And it cost some money. Yes. Yes, it did. Back then, it wasn't cheap. I, I, I hustled. <laughs> I sold chicken dinners and fish sandwiches. And I got my wife a Palm Pilot. And she looked at it and opened it up on Christmas and said, ooh, a Palm Pilot. Now, you have to know my wife. She has struggles using an iPhone today, and a Palm Pilot was a little bit more difficult. So when she looked at the instructions, she said, I'm going to get to this in a little bit, and she set it aside. Do I want you to know that that Palm Pilot has never been used by my wife ever because she didn't understand the power that she had in her hand. There is a group of people, I'm not going to look on your road, but there's a group of people that are sitting here in the church today that I told you that you have a mighty God and that didn't quite move you because you don't understand what power you have in your hand. Oh! He, he's saying, and he's going to get down to the Father later, but he's saying, he's saying that, that, that oh, let me help you, let me help you. Help us, man. It's different, Mike, to look at him as God and Father. I didn't get the Father yet. He's letting you know I'm God first. Okay. In other words, other words, men, you all can relate to this. If you come in and bother my family, I'm a beast first. Yeah. You know, I'm only a father to my children, but I'm a beast to the person that walks through my door who haven't been invited. He said, he said, sometimes God will take out his knife and cut your enemies for you. He says, sometimes God will cut, take out his knife and slay folks on your behalf. He says, not only is he your father, but he's also your God. He's your protector. He is the creator of everything. He, he is the head. He is, he is above everything. He is mighty. He, he, is, he is this gift, ultimate gift, comes with a lot of power. He says, he is God Almighty, you're not talking to somebody that haven't gotten a resume. You're talking to somebody who flung the stars in the air, who put the planets in the atmosphere, who gives you breath. You, you, you are connected to somebody who wakes you up in the morning, who gives you life. Who is God Almighty? Look at your neighbor and say, you got the ultimate gift. And sometimes you got a calling as God, God, come here and do what you need to do. I got this person on my job who keeps. God, I need you to come and hook this up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't need a, you know, I don't need a daddy right now. I need somebody that's going to come in and swing. I, don't, am I the only one? Yes, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, so I, need, I need a switchblade God right now, you know. Somebody to know how to cut, and then he can heal you when you finish cutting you. But he said he's God. He said he's known as God Almighty. Now watch this. Watch this. I'm almost through. I'm almost through. He is the everlasting Father. Say he's a protector. He's a provider for the family. He he he. Here's the part you love. He loves you unconditionally. I'm talking about a real father. I ain't talking about, you know, some of us had, and I don't mean, I don't mean to rain on anybody's parade. I promise you I don't. I promise you. Please don't take this the wrong way. Please hear my heart. Some of us have had so many jacked up fathers in our lives that we think God is jacked up like our jacked up families. 
And the father that the Bible is talking about is the one that hugs you and loves you and provide for you and, 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 you know, to help you become an adult, help you become a man. But, but he's going to be there for you. You know, he's, and, but he's not only going to be there, but he's going to be there for you always. Always. And, and, I, and if you've been around here any length of time, I had one of those kind of fathers. I had a father that never screamed at me. I had a father uh, 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 that never spanked me. I had a father that never raised his hand at me. My father never, my father would catch me in the line and say, just tell me the truth. What do you, do? I tell my father any, I was never afraid of my father. I tell him the truth about anything. My father knew where I was 24 hours a day. If I didn't have no business being there, I called him and told him in case you don't see me or hear from me again, this is where I'm at. <laughs> I had that kind of relationship with my father. This is the kind of father that he's talking about. He's talking about a father that will be with you even when you're wrong. Doesn't mean that he doesn't correct you. Doesn't mean he doesn't say anything about it. But he loves you in spite of you. This is the ultimate. Look at your neighbor. Say ultimate gift. And then he says that, 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 that he... He goes on and says, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful. He will be a counselor. He will be a mighty guy. I like mighty guy because I don't like to shoot people. I can't shoot people or cut people, but when the God will deal with, he said he, revenge belong to him, KJ. That's mighty God. Everlasting Father cut him a break. So I like Everlasting Father because he cuts us a break. But the last one says that we know him as a what? Prince of Peace. He's my hope. He, he's my victory. He's my trust. I have full confidence in him which gives me complete peace. When I was a kid, I, I, in, in the streets of Cleveland, Cleveland didn't just become rough. Cleveland had been rough all along. And I know that's right. All my Cleveland folks make some noise. Yeah. Um, I remember this day. I remember this mic just like it was yesterday. I was probably about 10 years old. And I'm walking down the street. In fact, it was 89th between Cedar and and Quincy, and I'm right. Y'all know what you know what is that? Don't you know? Yeah, KJ, know what I said? That's, that, that's always been rough, you know. But when I was walking down the street, my daddy had my hand. When I was walking with my father, I looked up as a ten-year-old boy. These probably was teenagers, but I looked up and saw these four boys coming towards. They weren't doing nothing but walking. But they were coming towards us, and I got scared because they were four boys, and they were big boys to me. So I'm walking down the street, and I remember pushing on my daddy's hand a little harder. I remember it as if it was just today. And I remember what he did. He grabbed me, and he picked me up, put me on his shoulders, and peace came over me. Because he made me taller than them. And we just walked past and I looked down at it. You got something to say? <laughs> because when, 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 when you really understand the gift you have, you can go to sleep at night knowing that you got a prince of peace that's going to handle any situation. Look at your neighbor and say, ultimate gift ultimate ultimate gift ultimate gift let say say you have the ultimate gift come on look at your neighbor say you have the ultimate gift <laughs> i'm a credit across the field last verse i'm through romans 8 chapter i'm through 
8, 31, New Living, New King James Version, I'm through. Well, <laughs> now that we have the ultimate gift, what shall we say to these things? If God be for us. <laughs> I wish I had a few people in here that understand that if God be for you. Don't listen. Don't you worry about folks uh, messing over you and, and talking about you and lying on you and, and your enemies and, and all of that foolishness. You shouldn't even spend time worrying about people because if God be for you. He, he says, if God be for you, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? In other words, he says, if I gave my son for you, why wouldn't I bless you and give you everything that you need? He's, he says, he says, I'm going to give you everything that you need. He said, who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who, who is, it is God who condemns. It is Christ who died. And furthermore, it is also he who have risen, who is at the right hand of God, making intercession for us. <laughs> who shall separate us? from the love of Christ. I like the way the New Living Translation says, who then is going to stop God from loving us? <laughs> Shall tribulations or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or pearls or sword? No, he said, who shall separate us from the love of God? I want to show you this real quick. Can, I give you, can you give me two minutes of faith? Two minutes, Faith, I'm, I'm going to be out of here. I know you're tired. I know you're ready to go, but give me two minutes, two minutes. When I was growing up in church, uh, come, come here, Elder Keenan. When I was growing up in church, I grew up in church thinking that this scripture meant that I can separate myself from God if I start acting up. The scripture says, who then shall separate you from the love of God? Nobody can separate you from the love of God but you. That, that's, what the, that's what they used to teach us. That's wrong. That's not what that scripture is saying. Come in. Come in. It says, who shall separate us from the love of God? In other words, God loves me so much that he has me in his grip. <laughs> and when trouble hits me and I'm trying to get away from God, he still got me. And when tribulations hit me, he still got me. When, when famine, I'm broke, don't have a dime in my pocket, he still got me. When, when I'm naked, he still got me because nothing shall separate me from the love of God. Nothing, nothing. A sin I committed last night, he still got me. Yeah, I, I was drunk last night, he still got me. I, I messed up last night, he still got me. I, I ran out last night, he still got me because no matter what I do says says you know what he he's not gone let me go jump down I'm through jump down to 38 He says this, I'm talking about the ultimate gift. Look at your neighbor and say, he's not going to let you go. I, I know, play, play softly, I'm through. I, I know there's some people in here that think that, you know what? I should have did better in my life. I, I haven't been all that I need to be. I, I haven't acted like I should have acted. I've done some wrong stuff. I would come to church. I would come on a regular basis. But you just don't really know the stuff I've done. I'm here to tell you, he will never let you go. It's not based upon you. The salvation was on his shoulders. And so 
at the end as I take my seat. Paul looked at it and said, for I am persuaded. <laughs> I'm persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present or whatever is to come shall be, come on, go to the next one, shall be able to separate me. Are y'all going to the next slide? Shall be able to separate me from the love of Christ, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able. Look at your name and say, your gift is your gift. For 